We've been complacent for too long. But that's over now. Hello indie game fans. May 2019 was filled with strategy games in early access, which I always found to be a little strange, since I think that that would have massive balancing implications. Regardless, let's begin with some quick picks worth checking out. Last. Surrender or die. Between the Stars is a space simulator game where you are the captain of an interstellar cruiser. I was floored by the visuals, but do note that it doesn't have the numerous systems and mechanics of something like a Star Citizen, but that may be for the better. I'll end you, Nortos! Systems completely destroyed. Conglomerate 451 is a cyberpunk first-person, party-based dungeon crawler similar to The Legend of Grimrock, but in a different setting. Cyberpunk as a theme can be very interesting if done right, and this looks promising. The co-op action game Second Hand Frankie's Revenge is a fun little twin-stick shooter where the robots are made of household appliances, all conferring different stats and bonuses, hence the second hand part. The art style looks clean and cartoony, and of course, it's better with a friend. Ever since I was young, there was all this talk about the new lines coming through, changing life as we know it. Railroad Corporation is a tycoon game that allows you to build your railroad empire across 19th century North America. I know train-centered games get a bad rap, most notably due to the thousands of dollars of DLC in Train Simulator, and feels like it is made for a very niche audience who is really into trains, but this looks like a great management game that stands on its own. Another roguelite deck building game, The Last Hex has the main hook of a ton of playable characters, 11 in total, which feel quite different to play as. It also has a more explicit RPG style system with equipment slots and having the effectiveness of cards and attacks be based on your character's stats. Moving on, here are the top 5 best early access indie games for May 2019. Deck Hunter is, again, another Slay the Spire inspired title with a UI that is very much more explicitly so, but this does have some interesting ideas that lets it stand on its own. The 3D visuals at night, the main system of leveling up your cards the more you use them, which is interesting but could be exploited. Additionally, using certain cards in sequence also results in combo bonuses, and of course, as with most modern roguelites, there is progression from run to run. Over the next 12 months, more areas, characters, and content is to be added. Humanity has ruined Earth, and extinction is imminent. An invitation from deep space offers a second chance, and so begins the era of Pax Nova. Discover new worlds and the secrets they hold. Meet new allies and foes, and fight for our survival once more. We should have learned our lesson. But have we? 
Pax Nova is a gorgeous sci-fi 4X strategy game that allows you to expand, build and explore on both individual planets as well as in space. A huge number of factions with different traits, win conditions, diplomacy and so on, this is indeed the epic space opera of strategy games that will provide plenty to do for fans of the genre. Early access is planned for 3 to 6 months and it is more or less feature complete, with the focus mainly for bug fixes, balancing and polishing rough edges. At a dinner party last night, I met a most interesting gentleman, an inventor. He told us tales of his travels almost too fanciful to be true. He spoke of a mechanical flyer able to travel in space and his journey to an alien planet. The freeform, vehicle-centered, sandbox building game, Mechanic Miner, is another highlight of the month. While this looks like a Terraria-style survival crafting game, the focus on vehicles is very neat, allowing you to exercise your creativity to build whatever you want, from catapults, submarines, spider tanks, airships, and more. One thing had always nagged me about the mysterious inventor's tall tales. How on earth did he defeat the giant worm? I had barely even asked before he erupted into an answer. They say that necessity is the mother of invention, and there are fewer necessities more pressing than not being eaten by an oversized subterranean hell beast. Ever the stickler for starting simple, the inventor's first crack at turning the worm was little more than a wooden plank with four wheels and a pointy thing on the end. Oh dear. Impeded as he was by hostile indigenous life, our hero did what any self-respecting aristocrat would and plundered the land to build engines of conquest, a ceiling-hugging attack carrier, a stupendous flailing saw blade octopus, an exploding tennis ball launcher, mine the backhand, a door wedge battle car with a knuckle duster made of spinning rail guns. Not a single idea would be left unexplored, for his very survival depended on it. Although the potato car was probably a waste of time. It nails the gameplay loop to a T, since you are constantly getting new technologies which enable you to explore further and to gather new resources to get to the next technology and so on. So this is a very interesting entry in the sandbox crafting space. Due to the endless possibilities, the developer has acknowledged that it is difficult to define a 1.0 version of this, with the main focus on finishing the story campaign so to speak, but more parts and stuff could always be added. So how did he slay the beast, you ask? Well, he never got round to telling us. You'll just have to use your imagination. Besides, it's only a story. Trials of Fire is a turn-based strategy game with a very unique way of representing combat on screen. This has roguelike elements, since the overworld is procedurally generated, and certain nodes feature events in that FTL style, but the turn-based combat on the hex grid is nice, since your characters are represented as beautifully rendered tokens. Since full characters don't need to be rendered on screen, the visual effects of the attacks stand out even more. 
The cards and equipment-based combat is very RPG, and I quite like this trend of more traditional RPG elements being brought into roguelites. I got some complaints that Monster x Monster didn't look particularly great when I featured the trailer, but man, don't overlook this game. Slay the Spire crossed with Darkest Dungeon with a hint of monster taming games, this seemingly cobbles together aspects of my favourite games, and the end product is very good. We have your procedurally generated roguelite dungeon crawling with 4 characters, a Slay the Spire style energy and card system in combat, as well as the ability to get new monsters and to evolve them on the fly, adding parts or straight up merging monsters. UI is a little rough but highly recommended nonetheless, taking the number 1 spot of the month. For more of the best indie games, do check out the previous video or click on the recommended playlist and I will see you after the jump.